What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the TJR Auto Channel. My name is Tyler and in today's video we're selling a vehicle or hopefully fixing one and thankfully the third one is perfectly fine as far as I know. But uh, I would like to start today's video off with showcasing the new boots on the goat. All right, guys, well, there you have it. The GTO is now on some fresh kicks as opposed to the stockers that we've been running for a while. Now, these things might look a little funky. I kind of agree they're, they're interesting, all right? But I think with some minor adjustments, I think they actually would look pretty sick. Now, for those who don't know, these are actually BMW Style 162s is what they are called. The rears are an 18 by 8.5. The fronts are an 18 by 8. Uh, the offsets are plus 34 and 37, I think, something like that. But uh, yeah, these things bolt right on. Don't have anything, you know, spacer-wise or whatever, but they definitely could use a different tire size, and we probably could use some sort of spacer. So we'll deal with that at some point. I'm not worried about it, but these do look pretty cool. I think uh, the silver definitely complements the black and the yellow. So like I said, let's add another color to the car. There we go. But now that we have our fun stuff over with for today, let's figure out how to change an axle on this beast. Alrighty, folks, so I'm making some headway on getting this old axle out. Obviously, uh, when you have a torn boot, uh, saran wrap and uh, tape and uh, zip ties don't really get you too far. It still slung some grease around, so uh, just act like that never happened. But anyways, uh, you basically just need an 8 millimeter uh, Allen thing and uh that's about it i'm using this as almost like a breaker bar with this and you know not recommended but it's fun because it's getting the job done so i already have all the bolts loose and whatnot but there's a big problem i noticed um that being and also don't don't look too closely at my exhaust hanger work but uh we got some fresh scoring on the drive shaft and i'm starting to think that that was probably the noise i've been hearing now when i popped this thing in neutral and took the e-brake off to roll the wheel to get the uh, you know other axle bolts, I was hearing a pretty bad noise, and I'll show you guys. Yeah, that that's just that's just straight grinding noise. Um, that's really not good. That that's exactly what you don't want to be happening, actually. So, uh, I guess we're going to be taking a look at the uh, diff mount today because that's probably completely gone by the looks of it. Uh, when I went to jack this thing up by the dip, and I still do have a little bit of pressure on the dip, so I don't know if that could be doing it, which I, I don't think that should be. Um, I don't have much experience with IRS cars, but you know, I have jack stands on the lower control arms, and the diff is holding some of the weight with the jack of the car right now, but I wouldn't think it should be flexing that much. So... Yeah, the axle obviously is out. Here's our new one, new used. And, uh, you know, this this is pretty solid here. Don't know if that's good or not. This is a little bit more free-flowing. Has a little bit of in and out. I think that's probably normal for like a little bit of give. Uh, this one's loose here. Got some give. This one, I don't think that's supposed to do that, guys. So... Uh, hopefully that was the noise I was hearing, but once we get this thing in, I got to take a deeper look at the drive shaft situation and see what the hell is going on with that. But if I send this up, this down, if we kind of force that and, uh, well, there you go. That's, that's the axle. And now, oh, so that, oh, okay. So that is supposed to extend, I guess, a little bit so that, that can reach. Um, the other one just seemed kind of extensive with how much it could bend. 
And then here we have these little, uh, I don't know, it's like a, I guess a, like a force spreader. I don't really know what you'd call this, but I left each bolt with their little spread thingy. And we're just going to try to catch, I'll start off by just trying to catch two in each, uh, you know, each side of the axle. Then we'll slowly work our way around, pulling everything in, and we should be good. some odd thousand miles that are on this chassis I'm gonna say the bushings are probably bad I'm just gonna say that you know I'm gonna put that out there uh, I don't think anything has been replaced on this car bushing wise so I'm sure the rear cradle bushings are shot because I could actually watch them flex just by shoving the pry bar up by the drive shaft and moving it so those are probably toasted and I'm sure the diff mounts toasted and I'm sure every single control arm bushing is also toasted the only thing I've ever replaced on this car, uh, bushing and suspension related, was the two front struts and the top, like top hat bushings for them. Uh, those were used lower mile units that came off of the donor black car. And then I also replaced the uh, radius arm rod thing bushings up front with also known good used ones. So I've only ever really touched up on the front end. Uh, I'm gonna take a guess though and say that when I'm really laying into it, you know, first, second gear, when this thing is really squatting back, and I saw somebody commented that you can see it in the video, and on driving clips, yes, you can actually see this thing pick the front end up. Obviously, no, it's not gonna do a wheelie or anything, but it is picking the front end up a pretty good bit, and that means that the rear end is squatting really hard. Now, we have about an inch of clearance from the drive shaft to the, uh, rear seatbelt bolt that is primarily what's causing a lot of that scoring on the drive shaft and that's not really deep like yes it'll catch your fingernail but it's not super rich it's more so just slight wear on it so i'm gonna take this thing for a rip but i can guarantee that was probably the noise i've been hearing not the axle Let's figure out a simple equation. If I'm not selling the Marquee, if I'm not selling the GTO, which vehicle am I going to sell? This one. So Crystal's time has unfortunately, fortunately but unfortunately, come to an end here uh, in my fleet. 
pretty cool truck don't get me wrong but I, it's just it's not for me i found out very quickly that i don't know if i really care to learn the old school carbureted ways and uh i certainly don't care to work on 80s shit boxes uh any 80s vehicle i've owned i've always said i will never buy another 80s vehicle and then i went ahead and bought another one so uh yeah i probably won't own another 80s vehicle anytime soon so that's that but it's a cool looking truck don't get me wrong it, you know, it has a lot of character, I guess you could say, uh, that being rust, essentially. But uh, very transparent with the way that I listed this thing. I'm not hiding anything. I'm not trying to make a million bucks on it. But I had somebody hit me up very early this morning saying, hey, come with the trailer with X amount of cash. And, you know, I said, OK, well, here's my address. Show up. So uh, figure before the guy gets here, might as well let her run for a little bit and i'm probably going to give it a quick rinse off there's some bird shit on the hood go figure and uh just a lot of like pollen -y stuff on the bed and in the back so figure i'll give her a quick cleanup and whatnot round up all the parts for it he's taking everything square body related i have so that makes it easier on me having to store shit and uh, i don't plan on owning another one of these anytime soon but she's still running pretty good still looks exactly the same i have not touched this thing at all this was almost kind of a buffer project while the gto was down so it was uh, cool while it lasted. I can say I owned a square body now, and I can say I probably don't want to own one anytime soon. Perfect. And then there were two. So now that uh, Crystal is gone, her spot needs to be filled on the side of the house. And uh, the GTO has found its way over here. Now, while we're waiting on bushings, still got to figure out this power steering issue. But there is one part that I did order that came in that I do want to address before I wrap up this video. That being my throttle cable situation. Now, obviously, uh, having your throttle cable zip tied to your fuel rails probably isn't ideal. Probably isn't ideal. So uh, we're going to remove this one. And I bought a brand new one. This is just like a 36 inch universal throttle cable setup thingy. And it's basically the same exact thing that I have here. But when I first installed this, when I deleted the, I believe it was traction control and cruise control, I want to say that was the box over there I deleted. So it looked a little bit cleaner. Um, I had to run a basically a standalone throttle cable. I messed this one up. Uh, I trimmed off more than I should have, so it's technically too short right now. And due to that, it's just not in an ideal space. So what I did, again, bought a brand new one. I think it's a 36 incher. And I want to try to see if I can set it up more legit. Well, out with the old. As we can see, this thing is pretty chewed up for me zip tying it so much. So uh, yeah, that's, that, that's good. But now the new one is in. It doesn't look too bad. Uh, I thought I would hate the like gray stainless steel looking braided line more it doesn't look bad it is a nice like little change up a spice it's not the cleanest looking thing in the world but i mean i can live with this since it works a lot better so right now it almost has tension on the throttle body but it does not so that is nice so that it's not holding the throttle open that is a problem i was having before sometimes the throttle gets stuck open a little bit very uh very uncomfortable of a situation to be in but that's that we have this uh maxed out here very loosely zip tied to this uh, fuel rail mount back yonder and that's basically just to kind of keep it in line but our real mount is over here where i have it pretty solid uh, i used one of these i actually bought these for the truck uh the like electrical wire holder things so i was able to throw that crimp it down a little bit harder and throw it on a uh, coil pack mount wire so that holds it pretty solid coming out of the firewall and then I'll get up under the dash and show you what we did there. All right, so it's probably gonna be a pain in the ass to see, but the firewall is where like that, uh, that bronze or like copper nut is. So you can see we have that coming through the firewall. I put a washer that I cut a slit in on this side of the firewall, have that nutted there. And then that comes up through and on the stock pedal, if I could find a picture, I'll put one in. Uh, there's that little black thing. Uh, it's like a little piece of plastic that usually would hold the throttle cable with like a ball on the end of it. I cut a slit in the side of that, fed the cable through there, and then that weird looking dome thing on the top of it. Um, I didn't really feel like trying to cut that off for no reason, so I just left that on there. So 
slid it through the uh, slit, threw that into there, and then now I can, oh, oh, now I did it. Now I done did it. And now there's like no play in the throttle pedal, and we have full range of motion. So we definitely have 100% throttle now. bit of input we had a little bit of slop on the pedal so feels much better already once she's warmed up we'll give her some revs and uh, see how responsive it feels Well, folks, that's where we're going to be wrapping up today's video. Pretty stoked with uh, the progress we made on Gemma. I mean, between the axle getting done, the throttle cable, and the wheels, we're in a pretty good spot. Uh, the things that we're not in a good spot about is the power steering leak and the uh, rear bushing situation. I did order rear bushings, so they're on the way. Hopefully, they get here soon. The power steering thing is, I don't know, man. It's not looking good. I got to do a little bit more research and see maybe if it's worth me ordering like a rebuild kit, if I can do it myself on this rack or i do have the other rack that has almost 200,000 miles on it i have no clue if it leaked i have no clue if there was any issues with it that came off of the black donor car uh, i have that actually sitting behind this car so maybe it's worth giving that a shot i gotta look at the money options and see what's going on there so that's why she's currently parked and it is what it is Good to have her back, though. It's nice. If, God forbid, something happened to Bonnie, I know I can hop in this thing, turn the key, and go, which is a beautiful thing. Whereas before, obviously, this thing was just sitting dead for months. So I'm a happy camper, to say the least. But uh, happy about this. Bonnie is obviously doing great. AC is still ice cold. She still is scooting and booting like we like to do. And obviously, now Crystal is gone. So sad day to see her go. Also kind of a good day because... It was Crystal, so we all know how that goes. But uh, yeah, going to a good home. She's going to be getting recycled for uh, another truck that apparently is a lot nicer frame and drivetrain-wise. So hopefully she uh, goes to good use, and that's all I can say. We tried, had a little bit of fun, not really, and I did get to learn a lot, which to me is the most important thing. I got to learn a lot, and uh, the biggest thing I learned was I really shouldn't buy another 80s GM. This is number three. That was number three. Four. That was my fourth 80s GM, and you think I would learn by now. Now, I feel like I need to either go 70s or just 90s and just like be done. So that's that. But like I said, that's where we're going to be wrapping up today's video. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed. If you did, make sure you subscribe to see more content. Make sure you drop a like, drop a comment down below. And uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for tuning into today's video. I truly do appreciate it. I love each and every one of you, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.